Michael, afternoon. Um, the inevitable question, I think, in January, transfer window, and the inevitable number nine. Is, is there any movement, any sign of anybody coming in? Nothing to report, same as last week. Um, presumably then, nobody out either? No, nobody out either. Um, when you look back to the weekend and, and the game before, we've talked about the, the bench and the, the lack of the, the ability to change things during the game. Um, and, and you said last week you, you've been around the squad, you spoke to all the players. How do you deal with sort of, sort of some of those younger players, maybe the foreign players, that are on the bench each week and, and perhaps thinking they're not going to get an opportunity, not going to get a chance? Well, there's a couple of things like Timothy <coughs> Pembele hadn't played much football, so we sent him to play with the under 23s. He got an assist. Mayenda scored two goals, and you've seen the the sort of uh, the brightness of that in what that's given those two. So that's the reason they didn't travel. Um, Bursto's working ever so hard every day in training. Uh, Rusin the same. I've been pleased with Rusin since I've come into the club. He's played more obviously in, uh, of late with me being here than maybe previous. And he's got a goal and he works hard for the team. There's a little bit with a connection with the with the language, but that will take a little bit of time. Nothing I'm worried about. Um, and then uh, Samedo's trained better, and I think there, there's an adjustment. So we're working with those boys all the time. I think also. It's overlooked, really. We lost Niall Huggins in my very first game, and he's in, he was an important player for us in the first part of the season. We've not had Dennis Serkin as well, and we've lost Bradley Dack and Pat Roberts. We've lost four starters, in my opinion. And so naturally, any squad in our league, when you have injuries like that, it's going to impact the, the, the impact of your whole squad, certainly our squad with young players. But in terms of the boys that are here working, uh, the training levels I've been really pleased with, and I'm working away with those guys. There's certainly the eyes on the future of one or two of them. You know, if we get put in now with the pressure of playing for for a club our size, maybe we'll we'll we'll, we'll kill them a little bit. So you have just got to trust our judgment that we're working away, and they'll get there. Um, you, you talk about the club this size, and there are tensions. You know, you can't escape that at the moment for one reason or another. Do you um, remove yourself? from those tensions because you can't afford to get wrapped up in what's happening outside? I think, look, when the season started or when the boys come back for pre-season 28 for June, um, where we are now in the league would be, OK, game on. So the positivity around the team inside the building has to stay the same and I'm sure the team uh, will get great strength off the fans in the next two home games. We have played three out of the last four away from home in the league. Our away form uh, earlier this season has not been top. If that's if we're, if we're being honest, we went away to hold a team around us and have won. We lost a really tight game at the weekend to find margins, and I think you know it, it was disappointing coming back. But uh, the positivity the group's shown this week, we have to go into the hole and then Stoke game the next two at home and perform. And if we do, we're in a fantastic place. I know you said as well you wanted to get on the training pitch, you want to try and implement new ideas. How, how much can you implement when you've got sort of restrictions in one sense with the, the squad that you've got because you need more numbers, you need sort of variations and how hard is it to try and change things in life? Well, there should be a lot of clarity because if you've got less players and the focus of those guys playing, the clarity in the relationship should be should be really strong. So no, I'm, I'm pleased. Look, as the month goes on, if we can get one or two in, there's people working so hard in the background and probably won't get the credit of that until one or two come in. But I assure you, people are working really hard. It's important for me and my staff, we focus on the players that are here in front of us and getting the best out of them. Then anyone that comes in can add to that. Likewise, we don't want to be waiting for something that doesn't arrive. Uh, it sounds like a bit of a scratch record and it's probably beginning to frustrate you because everybody's concentrating on this number nine issue that Dan Neal said after the game the weekend. You know, sometimes we've got to look beyond that. The rest of us are culpable in terms of coming up with goals and changing games as well. Well, it was a tight game away from home against a team that's lost the least games in, in, in the league. I think we conceded with 15 minutes to go, but it's fair to say before that we had the biggest chance of the half and even after that we have a chance where one or two players get in each other's way. So it's disappointing to come back from that. We now go into a home game 
uh, where we really want to push and, and get the three points. And, and that's the focus, really. I think with the championship, everyone can beat everyone. I think that's when you look at the league table and you see how many defeats people have. And if you look at our record, is it 12 wins, 11 defeats? Well, it tells you we have to be at our best. We can beat anybody. We beat a lot of the teams around us, Hull just previously, um, who are, who are neck and neck with us really in the league and, and pushing for the same ambition. So what we can't do is dwell on a result. We have to just go into the next one. And that sort of mental resilience and stamina is going to be very important in the next three or four months. Um, you talk about players coming in, players coming back. Jay Matetti's back in, in the room, so to speak, on the bench at Ipswich. Does he give you a little bit more freedom now in midfield because the workload on Equa, Neil and Job has been heavy, to say the least, and Dan's 22, Job's 18. It's, it's a big ask. It is a big ask. It is a big, if you ask them, they just want to play. You know, you ask them, they're, they're living their best life if you want. They're playing, they're, they're, they're challenging themselves each week. Most weeks they're excelling, so they won't want to rest. But certainly having Jay available and, and hopefully when we get there, Corey and, <clears throat> and Embo coming back and, and young um, uh, Matty Riggs as well. I think, um, uh, sorry, Riggy. I've got his name wrong there, Chris Riggs. I know a different boy named that. So when Riggy's back, Riggy's shown some really nice things, but he's 16. So, you know, that, that's the nature of our squad. I think, again, I'll go back to the, the players, the three or four that we've lost. That's, uh, that's not helpful at all. So hopefully the one who's closest to coming back in a couple of weeks will be Paddy. And I think he'll really help us as well, because that frees up maybe Pritch or Abdullah to go and play inside as well. Um, and Hull, Friday night, um, fresh in the memory, uh, close game again, and I suspect you think it'll be close again on Friday night, there won't be much between you. No, there won't be much between, and there'll be a lot of games like that between now and the end of the season. That's why we were disappointed, and the frustration was shared in the dressing room amongst ourselves. It stays there, we have to go into the next game, but for us to lose a tight game on a set play, uh, that's where the frustration was coming out of the game. We can miss chances and things like that, but to lose such a tight game on a set play, just before I come in, <clears throat> we beat West Brom, but we got the first goal from a set play. So you know how important those little isolated moments are in the game. I thought our performance away at Ipswich for the main part was good. Um, to lose it was really disappointing because I think there'd have been a lot of positives if we'd have got, obviously, a result there. The focus now is on these two home games. As I say, three out of the last four away has not been kind. Now we've got two really big games at home and uh, we know Hull well and, and we put in an excellent performance at their place. And I know I, it's, an, it's a football cliche and I suppose it's inescapable in so many ways, but do you see these two games as, as must-win games? No, in the 19 games coming, if I say that, I can create a mini crisis. Every game at this football club, the fans say is a must win, so I support that and the players do as well. Let's just play the 90 minutes that are in front of us. I think sometimes with a young group, you can start looking at 19 games when actually the one you've got to play next is the most important. So let's focus on Hull on Friday night. It's a get another game on Sky. It's another game for our team to showcase and then themselves and, and let's get a positive result. That means that will put everyone else under pressure on Saturday from their fixtures. Um, very quickly, any injuries, nothing to worry about in that sense? No one's back. Aji had a slight issue today and come out of the session. I'll need to assess that because I've come straight in to see you. Um, and Aji obviously has done well since coming back into the team, so let's hope that's not an issue. Great, thank you. Any more from the broadcast? Uh, yeah, yeah, hello, Michael. Um, you've had some tough tests, some big matches in your spell so far. How have you found your first month on your side? Well, I think it'll be a month, won't it, just before the game on, on Friday. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been everything I expected it to be. It's a wonderful football club. There's a lot of expectation. It's a young group that's got lots of potential, but we've got to move towards fulfilling it and being more consistent is probably the, the big word. I think our team, what I've seen is we shouldn't be scared of anybody in this division. We should, you know, we should go into every game with real optimism and then it's going to come down to our quality in both boxes. In terms of the demand of the job, I was aware of that. It's something that you're looking for. You want to go in where there's passion and demand for results, and and we've got it here. As I say, the the biggest thing for me is when pre-season started. Would the group have been satisfied, not happy, satisfied with where we are now, knowing that we've got the games coming up and the end of the season? I think we would. So now it's time for us, everybody staff, players and the fans outside to really push the next three or four months because the clubs around us are doing that, you uniting and pushing 
it's important that we're doing the same here because I think that we have every single chance of, 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 of having an excellent end to the season. The subject of Alex Pritchard's contract up a lot lately, how important is it for you that you have a, a player of his ability and experience in the squad for the long term? Well, look, Alex has been excellent since I've come in, that's fair to say. He missed the first couple of games, but then he's played very well. His contract situation was ongoing before I come in. That's between him and the club. And at the moment, he's here, he's in our team and playing well. So that's my focus. Uh, finally, obviously, you mentioned Saturday already against this, which is disappointing to go out on the wrong side of that. But would you say the group is starting to play the way you want them to play? I think that's going to take a little bit of time, to be honest. You'll see changes in the team structurally over time. I think at the moment, you know, we speak about the, the size of the squad and the key players. Um, we're, we're trying to keep things very much the same for them in terms of maybe defensive shape and organisation. But over time, it will evolve for certain with, you know, adding one or two to the squad or one or two coming back from injury, I think. I look at some of the players we have in training, like Jensen and Nectar, they're training ever so well. So we do have an option of a back three if we was able to get maybe another left-sided defender in. Uh, Aji coming back has given us that option as well. And again, you know, at some point, either one of the forwards in the building or someone coming in will change the dynamic of the final third, that's for sure. Like, I think we have the fourth, joint fourth or fifth best defensive record in the league, which often gets overlooked because we're a possession-based team. Uh, I think we're only 13th or 14th for, for scoring goals, so that's certainly an area where we can improve. And how important is it that the home crowd gets behind you? It's really important because I think look, we have the biggest home attendance in the league, I believe, and we, have, and we take the biggest following away from home as well. So I think when teams come to play against us, it's special to play at our stadium. It's an event to play at our stadium, and, and we're one of the big clubs. We don't want anyone happy to come and play at the stadium a lot. We, don't, we, want it, we want them to come and, and feel the full force of the team on the pitch and the fans in the stand. And That starts with me and the team. That starts with us providing some, a performance and energy level and desire for the fans to really get behind. And I've got no doubt if we do that, that they'll be with us.